All right, so hi everyone. Um, so this video is part one of my two-part toddler sleep series. Um, and what I will be talking about today is the key to unlocking bedtime success and nighttime success. Um, so the second video in my series will be linked below. Um, and that video is all about techniques that I commonly use to help toddlers fall asleep on their own, in their bed, happily, and stay asleep. Um, so this video um, really is the first part, um, and what I will talk about is all the preemptive steps that I often take with clients so I can get their little one to a point to where they accept the techniques and the bedtime changes more easily. And I really do think all of these tweaks and, and small changes make a huge difference in the success of the technique and the overall su success of the support that I give. Um, so I'm going to be talking about things that you can do prior to expecting your little one to fall asleep more easily and things that really help with that process. So I highly suggest, suggest you watch the video the whole way through and then you can check out the techniques themselves in the link below. <laughs> um, so, and often with my clients, um, I would say I spend probably around three to five days, sometimes up to a week, doing small changes again so that technique, whatever we're doing at bedtime will work. Um, and I guarantee putting in the extra effort prior to doing the change will make a big difference on the success. Um, so, um, in general, when I work with toddlers, I do a full consultation. So it takes around an hour and a half where I look through questions and we chat and we kind of go over everything and every little piece of the puzzle. So in general, there are a lot of like tweaks um, and small changes that we make and again prior to the bigger changes um so i want to highlight a few of the things that i look at um i don't want to get into detail about all of them but just to give you an idea of all of the the kind of pieces to it and the tweaks that we make so i have some some common tweaks um i'll quickly highlight the blue and then the two red are what I'll be really focusing on and what I think makes a big difference in the success of, again, those techniques that, that are in my second yeah. video. Um, so things that we often look at, talk about and change um, prior to making any changes. Um, so the first one here is sleep environment. So we wanna look at the environment of the, the toddler. Where is it that you want them to sleep? Yeah. Um, and yeah. things like, is it comfortable? Is the mattress comfortable? Um, do they have a pillow? And, and I have a, a video that I can link that talks about when to tell if your toddler's ready for a pillow and some pillows that I um, recommend. So I can link that below. Um, things like, is the room dark? Um, very common that we darken the room. It doesn't have to be forever, but if if it can help the child to be in a better sleep state before doing changes, then we do it. <laughs> um, so darkening the room um, could be part of the sleep environment. Um, temperature, so is it too hot, is it too cold? Usually between 68 and 72 degrees is um, the, the most comfortable temperature. Um, things like eating, are they possibly lacking any nutrients? Um, anything in their diet that could be causing some sleep disruption. Um, of course, we look at what they eat before bed, so we want to avoid sugars and give them foods that will help promote sleep. Um, that's a video I can always do as well. If you want info, oh, oh. <laughs> you gonna hold it for me? Bedtime routines. So what are they doing leading into bedtime? Um, so there's common that we might make a little tweaks in the routine. Some toddlers, we need to just create a routine in general if they don't have one. My general rule is no TV electronics. Try to eliminate those after dinner and try to incorporate 
any kind of routine that might help wind them down. So it could be bath, books, music, or just kind of playing. But, you know, our goal before making changes, making um, any kind of adjustments at bedtime is to get them in a state where they're not over ramped, over tired, um, over adrenaline, all of that. So, so it's very common that we make some bedtime routine tweaks and adjustments. Um, activity level in the day, something we always talk about, are they super active? Could they possibly be like overtired at bedtime and running on like those stress hormones? Are they not active enough so they're not quite tired enough at bedtime? So we just get a general sense of activity and we want them, we want each day them to kind of fill their bucket but not overflow it. <laughs> so we want a good balance between kind of wind down time and activity so, so, the, so that they can kind of balance those two things. So those are common things that we might tweak, adjust, maybe in the first day, small changes. They aren't going to make sleep amazing. It's not really gonna change all that much, but what it does do is just help them get in a better state to be sleepier um, and to be more responsive to the changes that we aren't gonna do. So you, you've probably thought about all of these things, but, and I don't find that they're, you know, gonna be the only thing you have to do, but we do make small adjustments. Um, one of the big ones that I want to talk about, and this is something that really does make a difference when you go to make a change, expect them to sleep on their own, set a boundary, whatever it is, um, and that is the timing of when they're sleeping. Um, one of the, the biggest things I find and what I look for specifically is the question of how tired are they when they go to bed. Um, and what kind of state are they in, um, in terms of being too tired, when you are expecting them to maybe follow a rule or set, again, setting a boundary or just having them in general being able to wind down and go to sleep. And what I find and what my goal is when I work with clients is finding that ideal time that we can start implementing a change um, before they get too tired. Um, I always ask clients about tired signals. So uh, what happens when your toddler's tired? Are they grumpy? Do they get more irritable, more fussy? Some toddlers I work with get kind of tired and wired, so they ramp up and then take, you know, up to an hour to fall asleep because they're playing and being goofy. Um, so we want to get them at the point where they're not too tired at bedtime and what happens is when a toddler's brain is tired it's really really hard for them to think rationally and they're often overly emotional and it's really hard for them to understand and have rational thought it pretty much goes out the window in a tired toddler brain um, so we can't really expect them to do anything or to make a change to be easier if they're in this state um, so one of the things I watch really closely is trying to find that ideal time and almost putting to, them to bed um, or starting with the change before they really outwardly seem tired. If they are already grumpy, if they're already yeah. wired, running circles, then it's going to be more challenging yeah. because it's so hard for the little brains to wind down and it's so hard to reason with them. And also when toddlers are tired or babies in general, they're... Um, attachment increases so they have more um uh like attachment to the parent so it's harder to make any changes when they're in that state they're just more emotional less rational so one of the things that i do especially the very first night we're making the change is watch it closely and always go maybe a little bit earlier than you might think sometimes even 15 minutes can can make a big difference um, and and that's something that I commonly introduce. A common tweak might be bedtime and think about the state they're in. Um, and sometimes we do that even for a few nights and the parent will say, oh, bedtime was a little bit easier than usual. Um, and still the behavior's not really gonna change all that much, but if we notice, okay, it's a little easier, then that's probably a better time to do it. Um, okay, nope. 
Um, and sometimes if parents say, oh, sometimes bedtime is really easy, sometimes it's really difficult, um, that could be something is the timing. So I, so <laughs> you want to watch um, for when they're in that spot where they're a little bit easier to manage and, um, and, and more responsive to the thing that we're doing and the techniques. Um, so let me just see my notes because I don't want to miss anything about me. Um, oh. oh, also, yes. So leading into bedtime, if we're talking about we don't want them to be overtired before we make any kind of change. Um, one thing we yeah. also look closely at is their naps as well. Yeah. If it's a toddler that's still napping, yeah, yeah. Um, they we want to try to get them a good nap that day before we make a change it doesn't really matter how that nap happens um i usually ask parents you know how do they nap best what um what are their good nap days it could mean making sure that they're home and at and going to bed the time that they they need to be to have a good nap a lot of parents might have an idea of of when that is um it could be that you know the parent may be even helping them in some way whatever it takes we just want them to be rested as best as we can again going into a change because it'll go that much smoother um if it's a toddler and they're approaching that age where some days they might nap some days they might not usually i would suggest starting the change on a day they did nap um, with my son when he when that happened with him and he did nap, his bedtime was always slightly later, which is fine. I would prefer to have a child that's less overtired um, and maybe it ha if it has to be a little later, doesn't matter. We just don't wanna, we wanna avoid that overtired state. Um, or say they'll say, oh, well, sometimes they fall asleep in the car and have a nap. That could be something to think about too, is getting them like a, just a little nap in the car. If they're a toddler that's, kind of again in that in-between stage we just want to avoid overtired if we can if it's a toddler that has dropped naps completely and is out of the napping stage then you just want to watch bedtime and try to go earlier and again always too early is better than too late so um so that's something i do watch very closely um and tweak for a couple days before we make a change um, just so I can see what happens when we do have a bedtime that's ideal for the, the child um, and sometimes we do notice like I said bedtimes a little easier than usual um, sometimes the behavior doesn't change which is normal but timing is important <laughs> and one of the things I'm a stickler for once they're sleeping better it's easier to be less flexible um, or, or more flexible but at the beginning i want to make these changes as easy on people and the child as possible so we do watch for it because it makes a huge difference okay so the second set of preemptive um steps that i often work on before again moving into bedtime changes is first getting them accustomed to the space that you're expecting them to sleep in um, so because what we want for them is we want a child to be acquainted with the idea and the practice of being in that space, falling asleep in that space. Um, we don't want them that to be a new thing for them um, before while we're also doing techniques to set boundaries and expecting them to, to do it easily on their own. We want that to be something that's just common to them and not um, something they have to learn to do. We just want it to be a normal thing that that's where they fall asleep. Even if that means it's with the parent or in any way, it doesn't matter, but we want that to be normal for them and we don't want to introduce a new space and a new technique all at once. Um, 
so this really applies to toddlers that I've worked with who parents say I really want them to fall asleep you know on their own in the room but usually they end up like coming out sleeping with me on the couch or coming into my bed or sleeping so they've never really gotten used to falling asleep in that space or for some parents they've never slept in it ever they've always slept like even in the parents room or wherever so um sometimes at the beginning we take small steps to move them into that space before even expecting them to be able to do it on their own um, so getting them acquainted with it first um, and one friend i've actually just been talking to you might be watching this video right now um her son it was he's four years old and he'd been kind of fighting falling asleep in his room and sleeping falling asleep on the couch with her and she'd kind of move him into the room she said she'll, he'll fight it in his bedroom he will not fall asleep well what we ended up doing was first um moving bedtime a little bit earlier just again so he'd be more receptive to it and bedtime did seem a little bit late and um and then he said okay let's just recreate what you would do on the couch but move it into the room so it changed nothing other than the fact that it's in his room not on the couch and then what she also did was started a bedtime routine of reading books to him in his room before bedtime and she said he loves one-on-one -on -one contact um with parents so and having that kind of individual time so they started a routine that he liked and enjoyed in his room and then he actually fell asleep quite well and she said all she had to do was sing to him and hold him and maybe give a bottle i can't remember but um or milk and and he fell asleep fine um which actually surprised us because she said he'd always fought sleep. Um, so sometimes a goal is just moving them into that space. Um, for a lot of families who m maybe have been co-sleeping, we will set up a mattress, set up sleep space so it's exact same, but it's just in the new room. And they might spend two days, three days, you could even do a week if you want, just getting them used to that space. It really can be as small steps as you want. And I have worked with families for a month at a time where they've done that for a whole week. They just fall asleep in the room and get used to it and that's the only change. Um, so that's one thing I do work on. And again, those small steps of getting them accustomed to the space first before ever expecting them anything more from them. Um, the next steps, you know, could be okay. Maybe they're now falling asleep at the end of the room. They're used to the routine. They know it maybe what could we do could we put them in the bed and lay beside them could some parents maybe even sometimes lay in the bed with them for at first um so we'll come up with some sort of plan to maybe start moving them into the bed into the space but having the parent be able, able to be there um so the change is is minor sometimes you know toddlers don't like the change but when we stick to it and we're there they get used to it and we move on um so before the topic which again is my next video of how you can keep them in bed have them fall asleep if they're not acquainted with the room you have to to get them acquainted first before you um you do any any further change so that's really common um and um, one thing I will say is when we do all these preemptive changes, what is it? Oh, something go under the TV? Yeah? Okay, one minute. When we do all these preemptive changes, nothing really improves. <laughs> so parents will say, nothing, like they're still fighting sleep, they're still up in the night, um, and that's expected. All of these changes you won't expect necessarily improvement things might get a little better you might say oh well they, they they're falling asleep quicker or maybe night wake-ups have reduced a little but for the most part um, these changes are more to set it up so that when we do more of the behavioral changes of falling asleep it goes smooth for you once you do that then you start seeing a big improvement in bedtime improvements in the night um, but all of these are just set up to make it, it it work go smooth so that you can start seeing improvement so it's really common 
the first week that parents might not see any improvement. They're still tired, they're still frustrated. Um, and then my job has been to just say, I know <laughs> we're gonna get there and these are just changes to set in place to make your job easier once we get to it. Um, so that's something to keep in mind. And um, my, again, my next video will talk more about, okay, once they are used to the space a bit, they fall asleep in the room, even if it's taking forever and it's a struggle, now let's work on the goal of making sleep easier having them fall asleep, listen to the boundaries, and be happy doing it. So so that will be my next video that you can check out below. Um, and yeah, so I hope this helps, gives you, gives you an idea of some preemptive steps. My general rule is just do one change a day. It takes a little bit longer, but I do find it's manageable for parents. So if I tell them, okay, our goal is this and and write it down we will write down our goals and say okay when is our bedtime goal when do we what's our routine going to be what time do we want to start the process of falling asleep um, what kind of changes are we going to do are you going to darken the room are you going to feed them something different all of that takes time and energy so those changes alone give the, give yourself time to just get them set up and then when you're ready you can check out my video for techniques or any technique that you're, you've been thinking about doing, um, these changes will help with them. Um, it can kind of be applied to anything that you're hoping to do, but you can certainly check out my, my video as well on that. Um, if you have questions, post them below. If you want to stay connected, I will be doing a live Q&A once a week on YouTube. You can subscribe and get notified and I will be on here answering questions for you. Um, so you can stay connected and um, if you have an idea for a video you want me to do please post it below and um, it helps me think of content and, and stay connected to you so I hope that helps and happy sleeping